Alright, welcome back. I'm the little team of a brother back here. And at this channel, we love being meta. So today, we're going to take a look at two of our favorite anime series that are really great at being meta, which is Bakuman and Shirobako, which is literally an anime about making manga, which is adapted from a manga about making manga, and Shirobako, an anime about making anime. So yeah. Uh, I'll say the first part of why I like these two so much is just basically it gives you kind of like a how it's made type of perspective, you know? Give you a little insider scoop about the industry and how it really goes down, about how exactly the shit we love so much gets made, you know, the process behind, you know, animation, all the shit the producers have to do, calling in all the different animators, you know, all that, all that shit that and paper might sound boring, right? But you actually realize of how tense some of these production cycles can be and how crazy they're trying to get through with, I think I would like to say, the hell of production cycles of these. And one thing I love about these two uh, these series is that they're able to give the inside perspective and it makes you feel like, oh, you know, might as well the project they're working on could, might as well could be real anime that we could have watched or a real series that we could have read because if they're not making direct references, they're making references towards uh, general trends, general and stuff. trends and stuff like, like that. Like one of the Shirobako two animes they made with like, what is it? We have to have an obsession with idol anime right now, right? Well, at least the Japanese audience have an obsession with idol anime, combining that usually acute aspect with some really dark like seinen aspect, kind of like Madoka Magica and stuff like that, or maybe Mahou Shoujo Lyrical Nanaha, something like that. And then there's also the fact that um, in Bakuman, not only were you able to see the uh, the intimate parts of creating and pretty much how it's done, it was pretty amazing to see how these two guys, you know, personal story behind it, right? It's almost like, on one half, it's entertainment of the two, the personal narrative behind it. Yeah. But the thing is, this narrative is very well, in, they're trying to get you basically, it's like, the battlefield is real life anime or manga making basically so the, the the fictional part is the characters and all that that that's the fictional part and you know even then they're still pretty real to me but this battle they're going through right it is just a special attack move it's them trying to meet deadlines trying to negotiate with their editors trying to get this shit out to print you know shirabako trying to get all the keyframes trying to contact someone on a short notice you know stuff like that that's the actual battle and that you can relate it back to real life you can ask any producer in real life and be at Say, how tough is it being an anime producer, or you know, just the animator, anywhere in the anime industry? You're like, holy shit, it's one of the hardest things to be in. But at least what they always like to highlight as well is, is the best type of hell you'll be in. At least one of the most amazing feelings that I get is that you see passion right there on the screen, and it was made by passionate people who want to pretty much tell the story and get it out there. That this shit, a lot of times does not get a thanks. Hell, they may not even get paid sometimes. Yeah, they do This is like, hey, can you draw 20 of these fucking country? Oh yeah, by the way, you're not gonna be paid until next year or something like that. But they still do it because they love it. They love the medium, they love this industry. And that's, that's a hell of a great story in of itself. And I love how they're able to wrap that personal narrative. It's like, you know what, this is my dream and I want to fucking go with it. And it's amazing how they're able to wrap it up with non-bullshit situations that makes you feel removed and say, oh, this is just a fucking... The, basically, the explanation of how exactly the rundown of making anime is, is not... It's, it's like on a info... Like in, in, in an entertainment documentary, it's on both sides entertaining and a documentary, right? You yeah. see both aspects of it. The thing is, it's... The entertainment part overlaps the documentary. It's almost like, to weave this narrative, we need to be able to tell that all the, you know, really tough aspects, the real life aspects. So that's where you get the emotional response of the fiction characters. And you know, one part that I really love is that they really capture that feeling of needing to lock up your fucking director so he can storyboard, because I feel like I need someone to do that to me sometime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to get right, right off scripts, because that shit was pretty hard to watch when you just see all those times you're like, ah, oh, maybe you can switch it out to there. And I'm just like, dude, come on, just fix on a fucking storyboard. And just, just pick one, please. And what was amazing is that these two stories are just like, it's just such a simple love letter to the industry. And it's like, 
you know what? This is this is for you guys. Like we're calling you guys out and we're thanking you guys. And it's such I a wouldn't say it's 100% thank you because it's also calling points to problems in the industry. Yeah. Like you know, overwork, overclock hour, this over this need for overproduction of anime more than you can be able to handle on a certain crew. But we're taking these crazy deadlines and stuff like that. It's kind of like something's got to be done about this. We got to reform it. We have to. We have to basically say we got to meet the demand of anime making somewhere. But we can't compromise human life that bad. Yeah. People die doing this shit. You know. Yeah. I'm saying they prob they're probably not thinking the industry self, but they're thinking the industry members. Yeah. Like people. People, people are working yeah. there. People working in the hard, just basically trying to work their heart out, trying to grind the situation, grind through. Because at the end, when you see a completed project, when you're with them 100% of the way, you saw exactly how well what cuts needs to be done, what things are getting keyed in, you know, and then you feel that emotion that you feel the same thing they do when it gets presented, and now. It may not look as great because you know it's anime, it's anime but uh, yeah, it, it, you, you still get the pain catharsis like, oh, they got it done. You know? And you know what's great about this too is that even if these are animes that were wholly grounded in reality and they really will try to stick to what actually happens in the industry, it's great that they're also able to show some of that 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 anime magic from time to time. The Moe magic, and oh, they, yeah, you know, that was just yeah. It, it, it's basically it's, it's kind of it's aware of itself being an anime, be, being about making anime. So it's kind of like there are eccentric figures in anime. So how will we demonstrate that here, where we have the ability to, you know? Oh yeah, I'm talking about eccentric figures. Fucking great part of Shirobako pointing out to that. Hidekiano reference. That was, oh my <laughs> god. I mean, Hidekiano is, yeah, he, he, he's one of my favorites. He's, but that reference just really hit home because I, I know it probably doesn't hit as hard because I haven't seen as much anime as other people because I've only seen him, his work on Nausicaa and even Killing and stuff like that. But I still think it was pretty great just to see, holy shit, a titan of the industry. Because you already know his presence. You already know that this is the, the big daddy of anime here. He kind of put it on spot and be like, hey, let's ask him to draw, to draw some horses, please. Let's be like, with the, you're, you're not gonna ask a guy known for making explosions and mechs fucking trying to kill each other to draw horses. The, think about also the joke in that, how silly that is, really, right? You know, on a side note, out of all the references they've made to the industry and stuff, I'm surprised out of all the driving scenes, they didn't make our way have fucking initial B reference. I think it was <laughs> well for for Shirobako, I'm pretty sure the driving scene, I'm pretty sure at least the mo momentum itself and all just the presentation of it, it's supposed to be initial B. It doesn't need to have play with music, the Euro B. It's just you should know. Eurobeat makes it better. Eurobeat, I'll, I'll, I'll fix that in that <laughs> Let's talk about Bakuman too. It was just I would say it was I mean, it, it didn't have its comedy moments, but it, I would say it was a lot less goofy at certain points. I'm not saying that Shirobaka didn't have weight either. It did. You actually did feel depressed at some point. But at some of the crazy shit that happened in Shirobaka, I'm like, all right, that's the insanity of what well, the director trying to get to the writer, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't think that ever really got to that point in Bakuman, where they made a comedic point. It was that done over with. I think it was a And what I, what, what I love about Bakuman too is that it's like, this is actually like, Shonen Hero just as much as Ichigo as Naruto as other guys as Luffy because he's been coming out and he pretty much has to fight for what he wants to do and there are other people that are bringing him down not necessarily because they don't believe in him but because they just they fear for his safety and they fear that you know this might not be the best but they said you know what screw it I'll prove you wrong and this time we'll be good for both of us right and that was amazing how he's able to do that with his best friend too which ended up becoming his Writer, yeah. <sighs> Shit, that was. Bakuman's a great story, and it, it's even though we're talking about that, it's about making manga. There's so much more to it that you don't need to be an expert on the manga industry, or you know. Anime It'll help you anime. learn about how manga is made, anyways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just it's a it's a, it's a great anime just going through. And are, it is it is funny if you actually do get some vibes of oh this is kind of similar to Death Note. It is made by the same two guys that made Death Note, so that's actually the kind of funny thing about it. They actually do reference it in the manga because, like, the, the dream of them getting an anime or a manga made out of their anime was of the, their spoof on um, Death Note, right? So, 
And you know what I love too? That they still able to fit the, the shonen spirit of friendship. But it's that all their friends are uh, manga too. And yeah. they're all, they all and at the end of the day, they're all competing with each other and they all want to do better than each other. But you know, I got, I got your back. Especially Eiji. Eiji, I feel like, was one of the greatest rivals. Written rivals, I felt. Yeah, just... I, I'm, I'm, on the industry references and stuff like that, basically all the people that were supposed to, were supposed to recognize. I gotta look to the list again to block in mind exactly who is exactly who, but I'm pretty sure the editor, I don't know if it was supposed to be Kentaro Miroda or not, but I really don't know. <laughs> and yeah, I, gotta, I just gotta look to the list again, I just gotta make sure who is who, you know. It's great because with both of these animes in the series, it just really drives home. It's like these are also people. Yeah, it gives a, it gives a face to something we can see, right? For me, so easily when we review shit, we kind of just get dehumanized to the point like, oh, since hard video was on the point, uh, animation hit was kind of lackluster. But we we kind of forget like the hours someone used to have to put in to actually create that, you know. And sometimes when things do not are not the greatest, right? You can't just simply say it's bad because of that reason that obviously they don't give a shit. Sometimes it is that reason, but you gotta put, there's always these circumstances we never really know. And you can only just hold it, because we always wish for a greater anime, right? That's when you cri criticize and critique things. But you should never, I feel like, go out of your way demanding your right. Be like, you know what, you will not get any sleep before I, have, before I get my anime. You know, that's kind of, it's a little... I would say the bitchy of you, kind of demanding all that up front. Like, you haven't really worked a day in your life, or at least working for an anime. I don't know what right you have demanding it. I understand the whole the cold customer is always right kind of thing, but you gotta really put it into perspective, you know? And the thing is, it just makes it that much more amazing that when you see something that tough, making it just a decent anime, and then when you see someone makes it a great anime, it just makes it feel all that more uplifting. And I think of I don't know, just these are these are great series. Yeah, I guess it's so <laughs> just you just it's basically just our go watch them. <laughs> go go watch the two things. Yeah. The great series. So anything else you want to say or? Uh, I feel like you know these are these are definitely great stories and uh Bakuman, it's three seasons, all together is about 75 episodes, so it's kind of a long run, but if you're, you're in for a kind of limit, you, you won't be I can just read the manga. I feel like I, was, I, I read the manga was a lot better. I just, I, just like, I just like the presentation of the story because you, they're very detailed in their panel layouts and stuff like that. So I, I feel like when I was watching the anime, they felt like they, I, they left out a lot of details and stuff. Uh, for sure, Bako, it's only 24 or 26 episodes. 24 episodes. 24 yeah. episodes, so yeah. that's not as long. You, you can knock you can that out. So, um, yeah. Thank you for tuning in again. Make sure to like and subscribe to our channel, and see you guys next time.